Dave Lawrence, the Workforce Afternoon, a lovely Friday we're doing together. And I'm joining the studio. My next guest is going to be performing this coming Sunday and Monday at the 50th State Fair. 8 p.m. shows both nights. It's a pleasure to welcome to the air here on 105.9, Bad Company, former lead singer, Brian Howe. Yes! <laughs> Aloha, brother. <laughs> Aloha. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you for stopping by. It's my pleasure. My it's pleasure. Great to have you on the show. And, and uh, we got all kinds of stuff to talk about. Before we get into the music, I understand that, that you have just come from eating at one of my very favorite restaurants. Yeah, apparently. I didn't realize that you, you, uh, you know the place, but uh, I can't even pronounce the name of it. You, Ch you know Cha 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 in Waikiki. Cha Cha Cha. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And you loved it. Cool food, <laughs> man. Oh, my goodness. They got the best salsa. And you get these big chips, which yes. is unusual. And you know, red kind of color. Red. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, fan if, if, if anyone's listening, you get the chance to try some real authentic Mexican food. Oh, my goodness gracious me. And you know what's cool about that place is last year, El Elton John had this crazy outburst where he yelled at some people and he called them rude, vile pigs. And we got it on tape. And so we used to play it all the time. And the chef down there, Rob, was like, hey, I'll make this quesadilla. And so there's a rude, vile pig quesadilla on, cool. on the menu. You got to try that next I will. time you're I will indeed. <laughs> Lovely. How long have you been in town so far? I actually got in um, yesterday afternoon. And already working the cha-cha-cha. Love yeah, that baby. Business. You're an yeah. animal. Yeah. So uh, uh, going way back to, uh, I've seen you a few times, and the thing that really was, was perplexing to me as I watched you perform, and I'll tell you the shows that I've seen coming up after this, but the thing that I was always asking myself as I watched you up there, and I know from reading about you that you're a big fan of him too, how did it feel filling the shoes of the great Paul Rogers? I mean, what was that like? Well, I've got bigger feet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's a whole new pair. It's a whole new pair of shoes. Um, <laughs> it was it, it was actually started off well, when I joined up. We weren't going to call ourselves Bad Company. Mm. We were coming up with a new name and a whole new direction. And that's why the first record I made was so, shall we say, unbad company-ish. Because we weren't going to call ourselves Bad Company. During the recording process of that, we, we were asked to come up with a name. Well, being... English and being slightly stupid, we, we never <laughs> sat down and, and worked on a name well enough. And by the time the record was finished and uh, the label was pressing us, you know, we have to get the sleeve done, we have to get stuff done. What the hell are you going to call yourselves? And nobody could come up with a name. Um, Mick Ralph suggested, this is not a jacuzzi, <laughs> which wouldn't really fit on the, on the sleeve. <laughs> so then the label, of course, said to us, well, look, you know... Why don't you just call it Bad Company, and uh, we'll give you more money. Nice. <laughs> so Mick Ralphs immediately said, yes, please. Twist my arm. <laughs> <laughs> I did resist for, for a short period, but that was outvoted by Mick and Simon, so we, that's how it came about. And that's why the first record isn't really demonstrative of, of, of what the band could and would do later on. And course. evolved into. Yeah. And when you yeah. were when you were uh, just a kid and stuff, did you see Paul Rogers live? With no, him? never seen him. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I wasn't a big Bad Company fan when, when I was when I was a kid. I was more of an Ozzy Osbourne fan and uh, Led Zeppelin and uh, Sabbath. Sabbath. In fact, Sabbath was the very first band I ever saw play live. Where, where, oh, that's awesome! What, do yeah. you, where can you remember where in England? Yeah, it was, it was in a place called Union Hall, which is the Polytechnic. It's now a university, but okay. it was the Polytechnic in Portsmouth, and it must have been either 70 or 71 because their album had been out two weeks their very first album the black wow. sabbath album with yeah, the witch yeah. on the front yeah, and, the, yeah. and the, the hazy picture absolutely yeah, it had been out two weeks and i remember they 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 had come in from germany in a in a, in a cheap beat up old van <laughs> and they brought their own equipment in they carried their own stuff in and they set it up they went backstage for about 20 minutes and they came out and played for like three hours it was amazing. It, it was just like, wow. You saw some vintage Sabbath. I saw some incredible stuff. And that's, that's outrageous. And, yeah. the, and it's ironic because when I first got to see you, you were out on the road with Bad Company and you guys were supporting Deep Purple. Oh, yeah. House <laughs> of Blue Light Tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was, yeah. The, uh, it was the spring of 87 and I, I was just a little kid. <laughs> what town did you see us in? I saw you at the Philadelphia Spectrum. 
Okay. Both shows. Uh-huh. Because I was like, I was a huge yeah. Bad Company fan and a yeah. huge Deep Purple fan. I was blown away that the two of you were touring together. Yeah. And it was startling for me. And I remember being in the 10th row, standing on my chair and thinking that to myself, going, this guy is really gutsy to go, he's like, he's up there. <laughs> and, he's really stupid. And <laughs> it, it just seemed like, you know, to follow Paul, and you did it with class and style, and you just took it like it was your own thing. You know, it was your gig. Well, uh, you know, like I say, I didn't join the band thinking I was replacing anybody. Sure. I, I was joining a band that was going to be new. So, a unique project. Yeah, so it didn't bother me. I mean, it's like, um, but th there was a bit of resistance from, mainly actually from media. Not the audience took to it straight away because it was genuine. You know, that sure. they, they must have realised that I wasn't trying to copy Paul Rogers, and I mean, uh, there's no way that I sing like Paul Rogers, and I don't think anybody sings like Paul Rogers, and uh, I sing like me. You know, so it was it was just. My interpretation of the songs was genuine. Yeah, at, yeah. Le at least I tried, you know? No, I remember it well, man. I thought it was really, it was happening. It was a, it was a fantastic double build. Did you get to spend time with Richie Blackmore at all? Oh, yeah. Richie became a very good friend. Really? And, uh, yeah. And we used to go ghost hunting together. W w tell me a little bit about that. Like, where and... Well, Richie is a, is a, is a real, he's into the paranormal very, mm -hmm. very much. And uh, he's always trying to play tricks on people, too, which gets a little bit annoying, but... Real practical um, joker. Yeah, yeah. But we... He freaked me out on, on a few occasions. I went to watch them record at, um, at Dave Gilmore's house, which is now called, you know, it's now called Sam West, the recording studio. You went to Pink Floyd's David Gilmore's house to watch yeah. Deep Purple record. Yeah. This is good stuff. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> and we, uh, uh, Richie swore that the place was haunted. He said, no, this is a haunted house and I can prove it. So he had us all drinking shots, you know. And we, we sat up until about two in the morning, and everyone's laughing and joking. And then Richie suddenly burst in and said, I've got a picture. I just took a Polaroid picture of a ghost coming down the stairs. And sure enough, he had this picture of this weird-looking thing, or like a cloth thing coming down the stairs. And, uh, and he wasn't pulling your leg? He wasn't pulling my leg, no. And, and it's like, I wouldn't go up those stairs again. And then I found out about two years later that he'd rigged it all up. Oh, and he I did? Mean, yeah, he rigged it all up. And I, I was freaking out. I, I wouldn't stay in the house. I moved out. I went down the road to a hotel. It, it, it was, it was, it, but he's good at that stuff. But you, you were, so you were there really hanging. Like you were oh, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Richie used to come down to my hometown of Portsmouth. And we used to go and st stay at spooked hotels, like spooky hotels and stuff. And, just for the fun just, of it. Yeah. Just, Such as you mean by cook. ghost hunting. Yeah. So we go searching out ghosts. And, yeah. and uh, was David Gilmore there when you guys were doing this stuff? Uh, no, he wasn't, because he just sold that place. Okay. And it, be it become a, um, a recording studio. It, it, it's called Sarm West, S-A-R-M okay. West. It's a well-known studio. And it was a, it, that was Dave's house, you know? I was like, wow. Have you ever met him? Yeah, I've met David. Yeah. You have a rapport with him? I don't know him that well. He, he, he's come to a couple of our shows. He, he was very good friends with uh, Mick Ralphs, funny enough. Sure. And they, they they hung out a lot, and uh, I, I get to meet him or got to meet him th through Mick. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, getting to getting to do that gig. I mean, being in bad company certainly puts you in the middle of a lot of cool circles yeah. of stuff. Yeah. as it's, we're uh, here. It was wild for me, you know. It was, it was totally totally mind blowing. I was just ridiculous you know the people i get to meet yeah i can imagine dude i mean that's sick getting to make friends with richie blackmore to the yeah. point that you're invited to go to a deep purple recording session yeah. and like spend that much time i mean that's rock and yeah. roll right there i mean roger glover and i you know, the bass player yeah, in yeah. Purple, we used to go we ended up going to disney one day and just got totally drunk euro disney or America? no in um florida no yeah it was it was florida yeah we got totally drunk and ended up <laughs> ended up on the roller coasters during that tour know? the house of blue yeah Light? Yeah, and uh, that was another interesting day. Roger's the man. He, oh, he's so cool. What a kind guy he yeah, is. Yeah, he's lovely. Loves all kinds of music and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I've had him on before, too. Yeah, he's a lovely chap. Yeah. And, and ironically, everything seems to lead to the next thing with you so well. Uh, the time that I got to interview uh, Roger was the time it was uh, Deep Purple and Skinnerd doing a co-headlining tour. Cool. And the other time that I got to see you in, in concert, besides the two times uh, with Bad Company mm -hmm. on that Deep Purple tour, I believe I'm a little bit foggier on this one. I think it was the summer of 93 that you, it was Bad Company and Leonard Skinner co-headlining tour kind of deal. Is that Well, we toured right? with Skinner through 92, 93. Um, it was summertime. And gig. that was on the Here Comes Trouble tour for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, those guys are, they're amazing guys too. And you said earlier before we went on the air that you have a, you have a great rapport with them. 
They're really nice people. Who they are really you tightest are. with in Skinner? Well, I know Ricky Medlock very well because okay. Ricky doesn't live very far from me in Florida. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the other guys, I, I know them well enough to, you know, to have a to kid around a good with rapport. Them. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, their uh, wardrobe guy is my ex personal assistant. Oh wow, Tom Fisher. So we kind of. We know each other through that too. And this uh, business is so small; it always happens like that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really weird. You think all these hundreds and hundreds of bands out there, and I've got links to an awful lot of them just yeah. by just by hanging out and singing songs. It's pretty amazing. No, I amazing. know, I know you do. It's uh, it's former Bad Company lead singer Brian Howe. He is on Sunday and Monday at the uh, 50th State Fair, eight o'clock both both times. He's going to be doing that. What was your favorite experience during your days with Bad Company? If you if you were to sit there, and I mean by favorite, something that makes you laugh the most, or something when you think of it, it brings back the best memories. Wow. Um, there's so many things that happened during that time frame. Because um, you guys went all over, and you played with so many great bands and tours and stuff like that. Well, one of the funniest things that ever happened to me... Um, or that I saw happen was was when you see Simon Kirk the drummer mm -hmm. legendary drummer totally blind without glasses completely can't see further than the end of his arm he, oh, he's wow. just he is Mr. Magoo <laughs> he's totally <laughs> clueless right well we were doing a show you know on the Holy Water tour mm -hmm. where we, we were doing shows in the round so there was always an audience behind us as well as as well as in front and the sides and we played this show in McAllen, Texas which was a a slightly smaller venue because it was a routing show. A uh, routing show means that it's a show we put in on the way to help the next pay for, big gig, help pay for the <laughs> for the bills on the way to a real gig. You know? <laughs> and uh, it was really weird because Simon obviously hadn't listened to anybody that day and assumed that it was a regular gig. So there was no audience behind us at all. Period. It was a wall. And Simon at the end of the show got up and started, you know, high-fiving the front audience and the sides, and then started to proceed to a clap and applaud and punch his fists at the people at the back, which, which weren't <laughs> Where there. there was a wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and you watched it happen. Yeah, and that's quirky for you, you know. <laughs> Completely stupid. <laughs> Are those? <laughs> <laughs> and that is the kind of memory that only someone in the band like you. Oh, could, it was, could it have was had. ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Do you still have a rapport with any of those cats? No, I wish I did, but the, for some reason they they really don't like me, and it's like. I read the thing. I got the one the one sheet facts thing about the name and how it has to be used and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it, it's like they're under the impression that I was trying to pretend I was bad company and I, and I, and I would uh, why would I do that I mean uh, that's why I left the band if I'd wanted to be bad company I could have stayed in the band um, but there's a lot of animosity on their part nothing on my part I mean I would welcome you know getting back together at some point maybe if they were able to do that but I don't think they're able to do it and and, uh, and they're definitely not doing anything with Paul you know what he's doing right yeah well I think Paul <laughs> Paul made a very crafty maneuver I think I mean I, I think he kind of led them down the garden path and then said you know what I'm bored with you guys you know what a huge gig for him to get the queen thing I mean it's, it, it's a weird gig for him I think I, I don't see the thing I don't see it the um, pictures look cool, though, when you see a couple of the pictures. Yeah, I've not seen too many pictures, and I've not heard any tracks yet. That's actually, on, I'm showing him on the screen here in the right. studio. Yeah. We have one of the pictures of him. He no, just it, looks, it looks cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, it looks cool. Um, I'm going to start looking that cool, too, when I, <laughs> after I've visited two or three plastic surgeons. <laughs> 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 but uh, luckily, I don't need my hair done. It's just my face. You know. um, but... I don't know, it's, it's horses for courses, I suppose. I, I, you know, at least now Paul must be able to understand what, it, what I felt like. You in know, your position with In my guys. position with Bad Company, when, when, when I replaced him in Bad Company, um, he now must feel pretty weird about following freddie mercury there's yeah. and well and i was also going to say uh that that he would right that he would that he would now understand what it was like to fill the shoes of a, of a completely huge yeah. iconic yeah. figure like and it, freddie it, mercury. And it takes a lot of work it, it takes it takes a lot of you you've got to really believe that what you're doing is real and that you're not just doing it for um for the glory or the glamour or, or, or the money or the I opportunity mean, or right the, yeah it's just like it's, it, it's, it wasn't like that with me 
And, and it, uh, I think it says a lot, too, that, I mean, Paul could, just like you mentioned, if Paul wanted to, he could try to do a bad company thing, and he hasn't chosen to work with them either. No. You know, no. I mean, they did that one reunion I know about, 99 or whatever, which, right. which was a successful yeah. tour, and they had David Lee Roth opening, making for a nice package. Yeah. But what you say is very true. What you've said, your opinion about working with those cats, lends some kind of insight into the fact that he's no longer working with them either. Yeah. Right. So the, the, there's something wrong somewhere, I think. But, I mean... I'm past it. I, I'm out doing my show. I have such a whale of a time with my show. What's your set? How do you make your set? I mean, you, it looks I like do the everything. I, stuff. I, I try and do just about everything. And uh, although I can't do everything in one show, mm. you know, some nights we'll do some songs and other nights we'll do... But, but they're all hit songs. You they're mix all the set up, though. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, much to the band's chagrin. I like Sometimes that, Sometimes they uh, freak out on me. But, but it's more spontaneous, though. It way. really is, yeah. We, yeah. Uh, we have a great time. I mean, Good for you, man. The, the, the beauty of it is, is that just about every song we do, the audience knows the words. Mm. So it's a hit song. So you know, they, they sing along, and that inspires us. And hopefully we have a, a great time. So far this year, it's been, it's been an amazing year. We've sold out just about every show we've done. And it's been... It's amazing because I'm the only guy out there now that is actually performing the hits. And you're playing their tunes, a bunch of the classic yeah. ones with yeah. Paul. I think that's cool you mix those into the set. Well, some people say to me, you know, you haven't got the right to sing those old songs. But it's like, well, I think I do because I was the singer in Bad Company for 10 years. And I certainly made enough records, five records, and then I made the, the Greatest Hits record, which included all those songs. And I'm singing them. That live thing too, right? Yeah. So it's like, I, th I feel that I'm, I've qualified myself as, as able to, to do that. Especially, you're yeah. not pulling any, you're not, you're not faking it, you're not saying, I'm Paul Rogers and I wrote no. these tunes or anything. No. You're like, I, I had my era with the band, and when I was in the band, yeah. we played a bunch of older stuff, and that That's stuff's right. great, and you're respecting yeah. the rock, which is really yeah. what it's about. And I'm a big Paul Rogers fan. I think he's got a God-given voice. Yeah, I read you know? that, and you have a great quote in your bio package yeah. about uh, him. So I, I don't have a problem with him. I think he has a major problem with me. Oh, you think so? Oh, I know so. Yeah, but um, interesting. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's it's pretty wasted energy, you know. Uh, it's like well, well, if I ever get to talk to him, a good buddy of mine is is like one of his good friends, the guy who runs uh, the Experience Hendrix label, the Jimi Hendrix's uh -huh, label, John uh -huh. McDermott, and he's he's super tight with Paul. Okay, and I've never had him on the show, but if I ever do, I'll mention that you know I'll try to get a dichotomy because it'll certainly be worth listening to for the listeners. I know that. Yeah, it'll be an interesting <laughs> conversation I'll, that one. I'll say the nice things that you've said about him too, because yeah. you do, and 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 you deserve credit for that. Um, and and before I let you go, you still in touch? You did some work with Ted Nugent too. Uh, on the Penetrator was that the one that you yeah did I uh, I actually worked very hard on that record that was my first record in, in America and um, I joined Ted very very early in 1983 mm -hmm. and uh, we worked on the material together and, and uh, although I never got credited of course mm. which is a common story I think with the Ted Nugent camp. terrible <laughs> I've heard of that before um, so and I, and, I, and I also think that I would probably have earned more working at McDonald's than I would have done working for Ted Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want fries with that? Um, he's not the best payer in the world by any stretch. And I think, I think he truly believes in the minimum wage. Oh, is he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that. Does he talk all that real hardcore stuff like, how do I put this carefully because we're on the radio? When in concert, he has a tendency sometimes on stage to, to make like, references that sometimes don't float really well with everyone in the crowd, whether it's about immigrants or racial sorts of things or sexual sorts of commentary. When you got to work with him, was it more civil? That, was it, was it a, a, a... Ted's a big blowhard. You know, he blows and blows and blows, but no buildings come down. Okay. So it's a lot of barking. It's a lot of barking, okay. and, and I've seen a situation, I won't get into details, but I've seen a situation where if he was truly a tough guy, he would have acted completely opposite of what he did okay and uh the only thing that i agree with ted about is is um the meat eating and people's reaction to him being a hunter which i i do think is ridiculous so, and i many many people say oh it's cruelty to animals and if you go and see a man on a hunt in the in the wild wide open and then you go to a slaughterhouse where animals are being killed on your behalf and you've paid those guys to kill your meat for you, you'll see the whole difference. A slaughterhouse is the most awful ending of an animal's life. Sure. And to be out in the wild and never know what hit you is, if you're going to kill animals, that's the way to do it. Did you ever go hunting with them? I did, yeah. You did, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
But I've also seen what happens in a slaughterhouse, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. is understand. just... No, I hear what you're saying. Oh. It's very true. I mean, you're oh. absolutely... Uh, and that's sort of why a lot, of, a lot of vegetarians use a similar sort of thing for not eating meat, is, is what you just said. But yeah. that's cool that you've actually gone hunting with him, because I, I know Carmine a piece pretty well, and he used to play yeah. for him, and he yeah. told me some stories of going out with him, yeah. too. But you know, ma many, many vegetarians... Now, funny enough, in the, in the same Mexican... Re let's go full circle here. <laughs> in the same Mexican restaurant... Cha-cha-cha. Cha-cha-cha. Um... I saw a couple this morning, at lunchtime, who were proudly proclaiming they were vegetarians. And yet they had, you know, leather belts, leather shoes, right. and, and like, and I'm thinking, <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> you're no more of, of a true protector of animal rights than I am, right, you know? Right. It's like, if you're going to do it, then think about it. Do it know, the whole because, way. Yeah, if, if you're going to be protecting animals. Uh, but their, their theory is, well, I didn't kill them. Well, yeah, you kind of did. You know, you really did kind of... You may not have killed them, but you tripped them up. Right. <laughs> you, you're part of the process, isn't it? Yeah, so it's like... Ted's right about that stuff, and... Uh, you still have any contact with them these days, or...? Very, very, very seldom. Okay. Very seldom, and... Uh, so out in the tour trail, you don't run into him or anything? Not really, because he's not doing that much anymore. I think he wants to be a TV star now. Yeah, yeah. You well, know? he had the radio thing he was doing for a while. He had the radio thing. I, I think that got old yes, for him. it did. In, in Detroit. And, uh, yeah, I remember that. I think now he's just trying to uh, become a TV legend, you know. Nice. Or whatever. But we'll, well see. Uh, certainly keep in contact, brother. And that would be very nice to do that. And, and uh, don't forget to f get everyone to come down to this uh, this festival this weekend because it is going to, I swear, it's going to be a fun show. It really is. It, it's, uh, it might be a little bit under rehearsed, but it's going to be cool. <laughs> you know, it's going to be like the, my band freak out every night. What, 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 what's next? I don't know yet. So, people, me. so between Sunday and Monday with his two shows at the 50th State Fair, you're saying that there's going to potentially be a different set going down both those shows? It's very potential, yeah. Okay. And uh, things get shopped around. I mean, the songs are never the same length. Yeah, yeah. And the guys sometimes worry about me. I think they're trying to check me into a, an establishment for insanity. It's cool to jam, yeah. though. <laughs> don't well, let them you know check what? you in. And that's right, you know, and I believe in jamming. I don't believe in having it, like, regulated every night. No, so man. You, it's like, if you want to do that, go buy a jukebox. Go, go and watch a jukebox. No, I, I like the Grateful Dead style. Mix it yeah, up. yeah. That's yeah, happening. Just see what happened. Let's try this, you know. Bang. Oh, it didn't work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At least we gave it a shot. <laughs> He is uh, Sunday and Monday at the 50th State Fair, 8 p.m. shows both nights, and it has been a pleasure having Bad Company former lead singer Brian Howe here in the studios. Uh, it's, been, it's been delightful, dude. Thank it's you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. I'll see you again soon. Fame and fortune. Bad Company.